Justin Mazel, I am a designer and illustrator. I'm going to repeat that on here. Um, and what I'm going to talk about today is a talk called A Place at the Table, uh, Overcoming the Expert Complex and Joining the Conversation. That's a really wordy way to talk about what it feels like when you just join an industry and you feel like an outsider and you feel like you're new to it and so you don't deserve a part to play in it. Um, and what it's like to really move forward um, and have a voice in a community that's already existing. Because there is a conversation happening in the creative community and people are exchanging ideas and there's a free exchange of that and it's difficult to walk in on a conversation that you feel like is already going on and feel like you deserve a place to make a mark. So we're going to walk through some ways that we can do that together. Um, but first, a little bit about myself. I am a designer and an illustrator here in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I work with the incredible team at Code School, which is just down the road. Uh, it's awesome to work with people that are a lot smarter than you. I'd greatly encourage you to do that. Um, I read comics. Again, I, thanks, man. I, I'm done. I'm just, I'm not even going to go. Uh, yeah, yay! Uh, also, I love uh, documentaries on space and nature, uh, which means namely this guy right here. Definitely a big hero. I mean, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> And, and honestly, can we just clap for the fact that, like, like right now, we just, we're going to space. I mean, you know, not humans right now, but that's, that's awesome, you guys. We can dream again. That's really great. Just, I'll, I'll have a talk after this. It's just GIFs of Neil deGrasse Tyson. You guys can, can see that one later. Uh, I love video games. I don't get to play them much, but I do still buy them, uh, and they just kind of, like, sit. Uh, so I, I got to stop doing that. Um, I really love bourbon. I really do. Um, so if you guys would like to have bourbon, let me know. You guys really could have upped the ante if you guys had bourbon here. Going to encourage it for next speakers. Uh, and this is, this is my wife and our daughter, Piper. Uh, I know, it's adorable. Uh, Piper is almost two. We're expecting our second, uh, Hudson, January 17th. And Hudson, if you're watching this, hey. Uh, <laughs> this is a little bit about kind of how my education went. Um, I, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I started college, and I don't want to talk about the education system, how it doesn't prepare you for college. It's a totally other talk. Um, but as you can see, I jumped around a whole lot. My brushes with creativity were few and far between in a way. I had a bootleg copy of Photoshop. I pay Adobe monthly now, so they ended up winning that battle. Um, but as you can see, I jumped around a whole lot to different things. Started off in philosophy and world religions, changed to film, did some digital media, there was code in that, and I was terrible at it. Uh, so I dropped out of that program, went over to marketing, didn't really like how that felt. And so ultimately, I ended up kind of falling backwards from having a deviant art profile, which was, you know, is between all the anime and strange cartoon porn, I had a, a, a profile on there. A local company here in Orlando that does magazines found me, so I entered the magical world of print design. That is actually where I started. I didn't know anything about what it looked like. Um, I didn't even know the programs. Like I said, I had Photoshop. I, I didn't even know that there was a program called Illustrator or what it did, much less an entire creative suite. Um, but I had an incredible teacher there who mentored me uh, and kind of taught me a little bit about what it's like to work in this community um, and what it's like to actually use some of these programs, so the technical know-how, as well as how to really ideate some concepts. Um, this is some of the work that we did there. It's pretty broad, sweeping kind of stuff. You know, you really don't have a style when you work in the editorial realm as much. You really try to be flexible. I mean, at that point, I didn't have one myself, so it didn't really matter. Um, from there, I kind of got a taste of that community, and I felt like, you know, I can conquer the world with a few friends. So we decided to move to New York City and start a company uh, together. And uh, this is basically kind of how it went. <laughs> it, it was not one of the better times. Uh, this is just another graphical summation right here. Like, it was, it was terrible. Um, it didn't go well. Uh, we, I even lost a couple friendships from it. I mean, it was a really good core group of people. And 
from going from a place where you're finally feeling confident, you've been so amiss in college, to saying, wow, well, like, I, I know what I want to do. I, I, I see a way to get into that industry. Like, I, I'm really excited about it. So then, like, falling flat on your face, like, it really takes the rug out from under you. What it really feels like is that you've started somewhere and you've taken these winding roads and somehow you got really drunk and spun out of control. And you're back at square one right there. And I knew at that point, like, I feel like this is what I want to do. You know, I, I'm not classically trained in design. I've never taken an art class, per se. Um, but, but, but I know that this is what I'm excited about. So I want to figure out a way to do it. But the problem is the creative community, in some ways, when you're new, feels like it's a conversation that's already been going on, and that you're just walking in on it. In some ways, it feels walled, like you're seeing this incredible community where people are working on things together, and, and they're, they're landing gigs, and they're able to like give feedback to one another, and you feel like you're on the outside trying to get your way into something. So I decided at that point that for me, what it meant was I want to dig into this community. I want to figure out what it's like to just jump in with both feet. After all, when you lose everything, what's left to lose? So for me, what this looked like was I would set my alarm to wake up every day at 5.30. And what I really wanted to do was figure out, like, what do I love doing? So I started working in web design, just trying things out. Nobody was paying me to do these things. Nobody asked me to design their website. I was just some kid in a living room, in my boxers most of the time, just working on things that I thought could be fun. And that's kind of when I started dabbling in illustration a little bit and realizing, like, this is really fun. Like, I really like it. Previously, I had done work with like photo realistic kind of stuff or like um, manipulations and taking different photography together. But this is the first time I ever had a completely empty canvas. I could do anything I wanted with it. I could create any character and, and really just, you know, put it out into the world, tell any story I wanted to. So that's what I did for a good six months, waking up in the morning, illustrating for a few hours, going to work, coming back home, illustrating for a few more hours. And then eventually, the scale started to tip a little bit. And it it was waking up in the morning, it was illustrating, it was going to work, and then it was getting jobs and at nighttime doing a little bit of freelance moonlighting and just kind of like dabbling in that world. Basically it was a time for me just to put out a metric shit ton of work as much as I could possibly do. I just put it out there, I just threw it into the void and just hoped that something came back. And in a lot of ways it did, and in a lot of ways it didn't. You know, I think when I first started looking for it, I was really interested in building an audience. I was really interested in, in trying to drum up work, and that's, and that's an awesome thing. But I think in some ways, when you focus so much on, well, I need to get this job, or I need to be doing this, you can look at other creatives and just assume, like, well, like, I'll just do exactly what they're doing, and I'll just, like, I know it'll eventually stick. But the fact of the matter is, when you're creating work, Oftentimes, it's more about finding people to come along the journey with you than it is just about getting internet fame. And for me, what it meant was finding a community of designers, some of them like-minded, some of them really different, to test my work with, to grow with them, to be able to have conversations with them, and to really just sort of live life with them. And you can do that remotely, and you can do it in person. I'd recommend doing both. But ultimately, when you're creating this work, you need to evaluate, reevaluate your motives. What are you creating this for? To what end? What purpose does it serve? Do you just want to have as many people seeing it as possible? Or do you want to affect the right people? Do the right things that you're excited about, not just what gets you page views, likes, or clicks, or whatever the hell people do these days. And I think that part of that is having to review that lens of success from time to time. As you grow in your career, it's gonna change. You might start off thinking it's one thing, and I think it's really good to evaluate what that looks like a couple years from now, and see what you were right about, see what you were wrong about. You can even write it down just to make sure you have a running log of what success looked like in 2013, what does it look like in 2014, what is exciting for you, and what are you passionate about. But ultimately, what I wanna talk about here is how do you sit at the table with all the people that are already here? How do you join in on the discussion, whether that happens on a local level or it happens on a national or international level. And really what it's about is developing your creative voice. It's about finding a way to be able to have the confidence to sit down and talk about what you do or just be a part of that community. So I've got four ways for me that I really found effective to helping me overcome that idea that I had to be an expert to have a voice. That I had to sit back and wait till I'd done more work or worked for some bigger companies or released more products before I really could have an opinion in this space. One of the things was indeed releasing work, just throwing stuff out there. There was also writing incredibly helpful for your processing. Community involvement, we'll talk a little more about that as we go on, as well as taking part in collaborative projects as you go on. 
one of the most effective, helpful things that you're going to do, especially starting out. So we're going to talk about a little bit about releasing work and what that looks like. At this point in your career, you have to understand that while relationships are formed on the basis of who you are, when you're just starting out, people might only know you for this, a grid of work. It's, that's all it is at the time being. So if you're in school and you're waiting until you get out of school to start putting out work, or you're waiting until you, know, you reach this milestone in your life to really start hammering into the work, this is kind of what your personality looks like at the moment. Nobody knows you at the moment if they don't know you on a personal level, and they don't know you by your work. So right now, take the time. Fill that up. Come up with work and just, just go nuts. This is your time to do it while you're starting out. I would say this is a community that favors and responds to action because we can't know everybody intrinsically on a deep level. We have to figure them out by what work they're putting out. That lets people know what you're excited about, what you're passionate about, what your interests are. That's an easy way to find other like-minded individuals and connect with them. I have a friend who talks about this idea of, of reckless creation. And he sees it as more of a season where you spend time just like powering through work. And you don't do it all the time. Like I said, this is a seasonal thing. But what it really lets you do is this idea of reckless creation just allows you to get out whatever you need to get out of your body, whatever you want to create. Just have fun doing it. Don't worry about what the audience is. Don't worry about who's responding in what way. Just push that work out there. And one thing I can just encourage you if you're starting, and I think so many people get hung up on this, is like, Stop trying to worry so much about defining your style. I feel like I have so many people that write to me that are just finishing college and they want help in developing a style. And I think that's great. I think it's awesome. And I think in some ways, sometimes the style just falls in your lap and you really grow with it. But if your intention is just to start off and like, you want to own this space, like this is, this is what you want to do. Like I really do think you're selling yourself short. Like filmmakers shouldn't want to make the same film over and over again. A designer shouldn't want to communicate the exact way over and over again. And believe you me, there are only so many computers and tablets that you can illustrate for a company before you're really done drawing those things. Um, another really important thing which I think we need to talk about even more and I think we need to encourage far more in our creatives is writing. Take the time to write. Like I, I really cannot encourage this enough. And, and part of the reason is because it really allows people into your process to see like why did you make the decisions you made. You know when you're getting hired people are looking at you and they're looking at your hands, they're looking at what you've built and how you do these things. But more importantly like I would always rather hire somebody for their brains than I would their hands. Technical know-how is great. You know, just because you know how to use Photoshop, you know how to use Illustrator, you know how to use Final Cut, whatever it is, that's, that's great. Ultimately, I want to know where it comes from. Why do you make the decisions that you do? Um, I think it also provides insight on everything that you've done up until now. What excited you? What, what are you passionate about? And I think it also gives you as an individual a way to look back and be able to think about where have I grown from? What did I think about you know, this far back? It's like a digital diary in some ways. And I know that it's daunting for people because a lot of people think like, hey, like, I'm just, I'm not a good writer. That's just not part of me. And, and I get that. Like in some ways, yeah, like some people are just born really innately natural writers. And that's an awesome thing. But other people have to work at it. And there's nothing wrong with exercising that side of your brain. And ultimately, even if you have just started, realize that there's somebody out there, even if you've already started today, that's just started a couple hours ago. They're fresher. They're newer than you are. They have more questions and more doubt than you have about what they're doing. If you can be a voice for those people, that's an incredible thing. Take the time to do that. Um, we're going to talk about community involvement and what it looks like. We work in an industry that allows us to talk to people, to talk to friends, talk to people we co-labor with. As far as I know, accountants aren't all together putting out their work for everybody to see and then connecting and commenting on it. Like, it's really awesome to be in a digital community that breaks down barriers across the world to be able to talk to people, to get perspectives. So we do have great sites that are really wonderful and you should take advantage of them. But I think that in some ways, we don't take full advantage of them, whether it's Dribble or Behance or however you comment. One of the things that I think we really miss out on is the opportunity to give really good critique. Instead, we use this kind of as a time to talk about what we like about work or occasionally it's just kind of like a visual masturbation time to just sit around and be like, oh, this is awesome, like I love it. You need to realize that like you're just as much a part of this discussion and you can engage others about their work, ask questions, figure out how they build something. A lot of designers are completely open books about how they create things. Give 
helpful feedback on how to improve. Don't just say you don't like something. Tell them how they can make it better. Give them options, solutions to those things. Another thing I'd really encourage you to do is like find somebody you really like their work, somebody you really admire, and reach out to them. Send them an email. Just tell them that you really love their work and you want to drum up a conversation. Tell them you want to enter into a mentorship and they have the time and the availability. You'd love for them to do that. I've gotten all of my mentorships out of just blind emails, just saying, hey, like, I really like your work. Um, I, I don't know if you have time, but I'd really love to just sit down with you and just talk with you about how you create and, and what it looks like. Uh, and these are people, you know, who's like from the outside, like, yeah, they're far more involved in this industry. They're more veteran type people, but those people are some of the most helpful people. I have got a friend, Raji King, who's been just like nonstop help in my process. And it, it started off in a mentor mentee relationship and it's evolved into a really edifying brotherhood of going back and forth about work, of refining one another and making better decisions and challenging each other. I mean I talk with them almost every other day just to make sure that we're thinking about the right things, not only in our work but in how we approach ourselves and what we do internally. Build intentional, meaningful relationships with people. These are the relationships that when you give feedback, you're not just signing into a website. You're not just saying, I don't like this, I like this. You're actually able to critique them from a place of friendship and trust. And that is a great foundation to be able to talk about your work. And then when you have the opportunity and when the time arises for you to do it, become a mentor yourself. Again, it is not too early to be a mentor. Take the time, share what you've learned. If you're in school, there's somebody just starting school. Talk to them, help them in their way. Show them what's been helpful to you. Be the kind of designer that you wish you had met when you first started. And we're also gonna talk about collaborative projects. Again, another really cool thing about our industry. We have some awesome opportunities to just jump in to a group of people organizing just something they like and they say, hey, just, I want to work with other people. And that happens across the board here. And these are really awesome things to do. And they teach you a lot. They teach you how to work better collaboratively. What's it like to be on a team and talk through how to coordinate schedules and how to coordinate concept work. You work on a timeline. You're accountable to others that will hold you accountable to that time. That makes sure your work is done at a certain time. And you work within, a lot of times, a creative constraint. These projects are put together on a basis. Find out what that is. Try to make your way in that door and really kind of work from there. But I think ultimately what this does is, if you're just starting out and maybe you don't have the clients that you want, this is your opportunity right here to build whatever it is you want. Once you get knee deep in client work, ultimately you're making work that they'll approve. You're pitching them concepts, but that's not necessarily everything from you. This is your chance, ideally, to be able to have full reign of the conversation, to really be able to do the work that you're excited about and you're passionate about. And right now, there are already awesome things going on. Um, just to name a few right now that I can tell you are just incredible projects. Future 52 uh, is organized by my bud Alex Grinling, where people just illustrate things from the future. Um, there's different categories like hoverboards or you know tech wearables, um, spaceships, robots, whatever it is. You know you pick a category. It's been an awesome project to see you know people get really excited about it, and you meet incredible people doing it. Um, this was a really awesome project I loved. I wasn't able to be a part of, um, but it's called the Monster Project. And what it's about is these kids draw monsters and you just take an opportunity to create a digital version of it, a professional one that they can have that's sent out to them just to remind them that like creativity can continue to live on well into your adult years and we still draw monsters. Um, this one's called To Resolve. Super simple. What's your New Year's resolution? Put it up there for everybody to see. This one was great. Uh, it finished up a couple years ago. It's called The Momentous Project. Just great things that have happened throughout history. Not great as in good, but just big events. Different illustrators took it over, really kind of put some life behind it. But I think ultimately if none of these things interest you, if none of these really like struck a chord with you, then just build your own. Organize it. None of these people who organize these projects have certifications in project management or group building. Some of them aren't even the best managers, I'm sure. Some of them don't know how to do it, but they just jump right in. And they unite a group of people on a common theme. And they build relationships out of those things. So take the time to do that. I mean, ultimately, the real question is, like, if you're in school or if you're just starting and you're not where you want to be, what is it that you're waiting for to decide that it's time to have a voice? And I think ultimately we know the answer to that. It always comes down to fear. 
It always comes down to being afraid that you're not where you should be. That in order to have the voice that you need to have, you need to have five years experience, you need to have worked for Google, you need to have really put down some walls. But these things can be broken down even smaller. Like, what are you so afraid of? Well, let's just be honest with ourselves. We're afraid of being wrong. We've just started, and if you write an essay about why you made the decisions you made, if you talk about your work and how you build the process, maybe it's longer than somebody else takes. Maybe you have you know, a technical process that's twice as long as it takes somebody else. Who cares? So somebody else does it faster. Maybe they'll take the time to talk to you about it. So you made a bad decision when you released a product and it didn't go well. Talk about it. You can be wrong, and it's an awesome thing. You're afraid of being found a fraud, maybe. And, and, and this really comes down to imposter syndrome. It comes down to like, I, I just fell into this industry and like, sure, it's working for now and like people seem to like it, but like, man, if only they knew that like, I'm, I'm, I'm not a good tastemaker. And, and I can, I think back to times like that where it's like, when I was just, you know, starting and putting out work, you know, you get compliments, people say nice things, but all you can think about inside is just like, I, I guess this is good, but like, you know, you're, I, I shouldn't have done that or I shouldn't have done that. And like, people are going are gonna to see that eventually. And I'm sure the people at the top are looking down at this work and they know it's not great. But the thing is like, imposter syndrome happens to everyone. The most established designer still suffer from it. In conversations that I've had with them about how we overcome this, we all have our different ways, but we all suffer from it. And it's a powerful thing if you let it become one. And I think ultimately what we're afraid of is like, we're afraid of being ourselves. Like, whatever it is about you that makes you you, whatever you're excited about, if you love like, I don't know, if you're a brony, if you like really like video games, I don't, I don't know what it is about you that makes you different or excited, but like find those things. Because what you're passionate about, you're going to be able to build out of. So feel free to like let your freak flag fly. People are going to find it and they're going to find your work and they're going to cling to it because it's an outward representation of something they experience internally. And that's a really powerful thing if you're willing to share that kind of stuff. I think it's easier to be a brand than it is an individual in a lot of ways. When I first started, I was, I was really afraid of being who I was, which to me is just this like nerdy, sci-fi loving comic book geek. Um, and instead it was easier for me to release work like with just my name and I, there was no titles on anything. I never really explained my work. It was always a number. It was like shot 0001. I, I did that on purpose. It was this really cold, you know, robotic kind of speak because for me, I didn't want people to get caught up in who I was. I didn't want people to know, you know, what it is I do or what it is I think because for me it was just about me. Like that's mine. You don't get to own that. And I don't think people get to own that. But I think you'll find that people want to know who you are. What's the brain behind what you do because it makes you unique. Because your perspective is important and the things you create are exciting. When you're a brand you build an identity around a good and a service. And when I was just doing work and putting it out into the void without using any part of myself, anything that was really exciting to me, this is essentially what I was. I was just a brand. But I think when you share a bit of yourself in that work that you create, you end up basically showing that you are this larger pie. And everything that's all you, is it, it's bigger than just the work you put out. Your goods and your services you offer, they're but a facet of what makes you unique, of what makes you an individual. And that sometimes is scary for people. But I think you have to take the time to break down those walls to really figure out, like, I don't care anymore. Like, I'm excited about this. This is something I love and I think it's worth talking about. And I think it's worth creating art about. And find other people in multidisciplinary fields, work with them, visualize those things in new ways. After all, there's no invitation to do this. There's like no golden ticket that just says, you can, you can be in this industry now, that's fine. If you keep waiting until you're an expert to do this, you're just gonna be silent. That's it, you're just not gonna put anything out. You're gonna be that blank grid that doesn't have any work out there. And you might be excited about things and things get you excited to work in an industry like this, but ultimately your inactivity will kill any innovation you have. Any great ideas you wanna act on, any stories you wanna tell, the longer you don't tell them, nobody else is. Or even in a worst case scenario, somebody else will tell it and will push you down to not feel like you can be a part of that anymore. And you abandon that idea. So let's talk through a couple ways that you can get started doing this. And I mean like doing this today. Focus on who you are, not what you're not. And what I mean by that is 
You don't feel like you've worked for enough companies. You don't feel like you've worked here long enough. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about those things. It doesn't matter what you're, what you're not. Focus on what you can do. You're excited about visuals. You're excited about filmmaking. You're excited about telling stories. You are a storyteller. Talk about that. Figure out what it's like to experience that. There's somebody out there who wants to know what that looks like. Don't worry if people disagree. I'd be far more concerned if they're completely indifferent. You know, this is not about building the biggest audience for yourself. It's not about getting the masses to follow your work. It's about connecting to people and allowing them to understand what you build and why you build it and allow them to experience something that maybe they wouldn't have been able to experience in their day to day. Value more than just your work. Value your voice, but ultimately value yourself. You're important and your story is important, so figure out a way to tell it. If you're swayed by numbers, this was really big for me. And you're the kind of person that like, hey, I really want to blog, I really want to write. Uh, I'm going to figure out a way to do that. And then you keep those Google Analytics on your site. And you check every day and you're like, man, like, only 10 people read this one. Or you go back and you're like, you know, like, this was really only shared a few times on Twitter. And you search for that URL on Twitter just to see if anybody's talking about it. And nobody's talking about it. And you allow that to influence you. And before you've really started, you stop. Because you haven't seen that traction. That is a killer. So many things that were started didn't catch wind until way later. And, and let's just be honest, some of them never catch wind. Some of them never get as big as you think they deserve to be. But it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, if you've connected with someone, if someone read that post and it really resonated with, and they took something away from that that was more than they could conjure up themselves, like that's a win. That's important and you should, you should be okay with that. Um, Realize this, you're not the best designer. Like, and, and that's okay. But like more important, that is completely irrelevant. That has no bearance over what you build and what stories you want to tell. So just like toss that shit out. It's not good. You do not have all the answers about this. Like that is awesome. Like that is the absolute best thing I could hear. Because the fact is, like, if this is what like having it all figured out looks like, like we're all done for. Like that sucks. If this is if this is what knowing what it all looks like, I I, I don't want to know it all. It's it's terrible. I want to continually grow, and you should want to continually you know grow and be excited about those new challenges and those new things. You know, really, what this is about, and this is just in closing to remember, is that a conversation is happening right now. Like this very moment, someone is building something. Somebody is looking for collaborators. Somebody wants to tell a story. And right now, you get the opportunity to choose how and when you get to be a part. Students, do it now. Don't wait until you're out of school. If you're just changing careers, maybe you've worked a different career and you're just kind of wading into the creative waters, Jump in with both feet. Figure out how to, how to really pivot your life to be excited about this, to be a part of all the amazing things that are going on. It's an awesome time to be here. And I'm honestly just really glad to be here with you guys. So thanks so much, you guys. I appreciate it. You talk a lot about writing. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, for me personally, I think the best thing that you can do is put it out there. Um, more because the struggles that you share are going to be experienced across the board. Some of these things that you're running into, some of the things that worry you, that make you nervous, um, that you don't feel like you're good enough for, having somebody else come alongside you from it is an awesome thing. That one email you get from that blog post that never took off, that nobody read, that says, listen, like I'm right there and I'm struggling and I just want to let you know that like this was it for me. Like this, this changed the game for me. For you, that'll change the game just as much. So I'd say, if you're writing something, take the time, release it, put it out there. Um, it's an awesome thing to do. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed how your talk was centered mostly kind of about getting started. Mm -hmm. Because no matter how far you are, everyone's kind of getting started at a company. And a lot of creators, when they start off, think that like, like, their growth is like this exponential, like straight type of line. But it's more like this like Absolutely. So when you hit some of those pieces, if you're gonna go back in time and be like, just, just do this, what was like that piece of advice that you would give yourself years ago? Yeah, that's that's a really great question. Um, first off, I totally agree with that. Like, we are not done growing, um, and I'd say like if you get really comfortable and you're in a space and you you do feel like you're just going up until the right all the time, like 
stop doing it. Like, take a nosedive. Like, remind yourself what it's like to start something new, something fresh. Um, for me, I guess like the one thing that I wish I would have known like from the beginning um, is like, you know, I kind of fell into design. I didn't have a family in design. I didn't have friends that really did design. Um, when, I, when I started, you know, I met incredible people that did it. Um, but I do remember looking up to these people that like were creating awesome work and thinking like, man, like, once I, once I finish this job, you know, that I'm working as my day job, I really want to like take advantage of that. Maybe I'll do freelance and like I'll, I'll really work on building my own persona and all that stuff. I wish I would have started then. I wish like I would have um, I would have engaged people. You know, I thought if I would have written an email originally right off the bat without having work to back it up, that somebody would have just been like, I, I don't know, you, why, why would I write back to you? Um, once I had work, I started doing that, but I also realized how easy it was just to connect with people, uh, and that some of those people that are creating amazing work are are so willing to share and are so willing to take the time to just say, yeah, like I'll absolutely look at your work or I'll absolutely like mentor you, you know, a much more involved relationship. Um, I wish I would have taken better advantage of that initially. And um, that's something even now that like, that's one of my favorite parts of my job. I, I love being able to talk with young people um, and really just kind of like help them with their work or just kind of like with their own uh, internal battles of staying in this industry. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So I forgot I was supposed to be repeating questions. So she asked, uh, when I came back from New York, massive failure. Uh, how did I regroup from that? Um, I didn't do it in a healthy way. I will definitely say that. Um, for me, when I came back from New York, um, I was curious about illustration. It was something that I really had always kind of wanted to try, like looking at illustrations. But if I'm going to be completely honest with myself, the other reason why I was interested in illustration was in the business that I had started with my friends, I had to rely on the services of others to do it. Um, and I wanted to be able to do something that was only about me, that I didn't have to worry about other people having to input into. Um, so when I started illustration, it was actually kind of a selfishly motivated thing to say, all right, like I, I can build this myself. I can like you know create my own empire by myself, and I'll just do this. Um, but ultimately, I think you know I had to get healthy with that view and understand that like my my desire to be alone and create my work alone, and it only it took months for me to realize these conclusions that like I want to be in a community, I want to be a part of the conversation versus I just want to throw stuff at the wall and like see what sticks. Um, I think that there's a tendency right when you start to just want this one-way relationship to say like here's my work, take it, let me know what you think, but don't let me know. Like I'm just gonna you know, you need to be a part of that conversation and you need to be pouring out and and like you need to be banding with other people. So for me. I reeled in a pretty negative way, um, and it, it really did take a good six months for me to actually realize the more unhealthy tendencies in my own life. That, like, I was like, man, if I keep this up, like, it will like destroy me versus help me. Um, some of those things that really are helpful in the beginning are the things that bring us down later in life. So it's always something really good to remember. Questions? I'll repeat your question. Yes. So, how? I guess how often do you feel like you're? able to do personal projects where it's not very agenda based as mm -hmm. opposed to your client based projects. I know you said when you started out you were kind of just yeah. creating that catalog. You do more. Stuff, you know what I mean? Like do you feel like do you try to intentionally have times of just personal, I'm just doing this for me, as opposed to client based and how often do you do Sure. It? So he asked, how much time do you get to spend doing personal projects that you're excited about versus, you know, obviously when you work professionally, you're doing a lot more work for the companies that you work for. Um, I can tell you that it gets more difficult. Um, it gets exponentially more difficult when you get a job. It gets even more difficult when you have a kid. Um, those things make life a little bit more hectic, um, which is why I'm trying to encourage you right now, if you're young and you're just starting out, do it now, like start now, to know that like your evenings could be spent building things, like that's, that's really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I still try to make sure that there's one ongoing project I'm doing at all times that's just for me, that, that's not for a client. It's, it, and usually, when I say just for me, I mean like, just for me and maybe a friend. I usually always try to include somebody else to like work on it together. Um, a few months ago, a bud of mine and I, we did a project just called Grown Ass Men Drawing Pokemon. 
where we just hand drew Pokemon because I don't know how to hand draw. So like we just drew them. Um, and that was like a really fun side project. Uh, my friend Raji and I always kind of go back and forth on this project called Epic Armory where we illustrate science fiction weapons from video games and television. Um, you know, now I can't always schedule exactly, you know, oh, I know this month I'm going to be able to spend you know, 40 hours on it. But I can say, this is a project I want to always work towards when I have the time. But that also means like making the time to do those things. So it means like, instead of playing a video game like I wish I could play, it means I want to work on a project to make myself better. Or that gives you the time to like experiment in a style like you've never been hired to do. Like, like maybe nobody knows you like to do this kind of stuff because you never put that work out there. Well, that's good. Nobody's paying you to do it, so just do it yourself. Um, so I'd say always have an ongoing project, and if you're in school, like don't stop. Like find some other people that you can connect with. Um, reach out to some of these people that are running these collaborative design projects. Some of them release a new product every week, a new illustration or a new design piece. Talk to them. Send them an email. Say, I want to be a part. How can I do that? And I guarantee you, most of them will respond just excited to have you there. They're always looking for people with a lot of these projects. Any other questions? Oh, yes. So when are you going to bottle and sell your awesomeness? When am I going to bottle and sell my awesomeness? Uh, I don't know anything about shipping, manufacturing, or product selling, uh, so probably never. Uh, and you know, like I can, I can sell like imposter syndrome really well, though. So I, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah.